I'm moving on to the third extraordinary city council meeting. Sorry, Chief Exec. Uh, can I advise that apologies for absence have been received from councillors Joanne Calvert and Frank Prendergast. Are there any further apologies? Yeah. Uh, Lord Mayor, Joanne Kush councillor Joanne Kushner. Okay, no, so thank you, councillor Kushner. So, item number one, consultation of the people of Liverpool over the future of the elected mayorality by councillors Richard Kemp, councillor Andrew Makinson, councillor Liz Makinson, councillor Chris Brown, councillor Nina Waters, and councillor Barbara Mace, councillor Carol Story, councillor Alan Tormey, councillor Malcolm Kennedy, and councillor Kane. Kelly. Kelly. Sorry, Kelly, and councillor Kay Davis. Can I invite councillor Richard Kemp? To move the motion standing in his name, formal confirmation has been received that the motion is seconded by Councillor Andrew Makinson. You have up to four minutes to speak on this motion. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you, my Lord Mayor. Uh, this is deja vu all over again, isn't it? Since 2012, I have opposed the mayoralty being introduced into this city. I was supported at that vote by the then Green Party, although uh, Councillor Radford voted the other way, but has now changed his mind. And that's fair, that's politics, and that's what we can do in the light of experience. But we should never forget that the elected mayoralty was introduced into this city on the basis of a fundamental lie. We were told as a council that we would get a much better city deal and that by building a relationship with the Tory government, we would get untold riches and great support for the work we wanted to do. Did we? Well, I've had to sit in the council chamber year after year when I was told that the government, partly coalition to begin with, but for the last six years, Tory, has taken the money away from us, although we have an elected mayor. I'm not going to go into any of the legalities, but we believe strongly that many of the problems in this city have arisen because of the type of governance system we have. A system that all concentrates all power into one pair of hands. A system which then fails to control those pair of hands because most of the members of the controlling group are appointed, uh, certainly by the previous mayor, it may be different in future, by the mayor, who can then control uh, what happens. And we know just months after the elected mayoralty was introduced, the then Labour whip, Alan Dean, reminded all these select committee chairs that they had to do what the mayor of Liverpool wanted, because he was the one that appointed them. And that's against all good practice for scrutiny and selection. I'll deal with the Labour motion, uh, the Labour amendment in my right to reply, uh, my Lord Mayor. But I just want to say this. I want to put this to the people of Liverpool from who it should never have been taken in the first place. How we govern ourselves is fundamentally a decision of the people. That was denied to them now, and it's quite clear from the amendment that's being proposed that they want to do it again. My Lord Mayor, I beg to move. Thank you, Councillor Kemp. Can I just remind people that not to reference former councillors because they do not have a right to reply. Uh, can I bring in uh, the amendment that we've received from Councillor Dan Barrington, which is attached as Appendix G in this note. Formal confirmation has also been received that the amendment is seconded by Councillor Liz Parsons. Can I please invite Councillor Dan Barrington to speak to your amendment? Thank you, Lord Mayor. I'd like to formally move the amendment. Liverpool Labour Group believes that the governance of the city is an important issue. The Council adopted the mayoral model in 2012 to secure a city deal. This has helped us deliver new homes, new schools and create local jobs. In 2019, the Labour Group internally went through a process looking at the different governance models. 
in the end, we agreed that this needed to be a wider conversation and that ultimately the final say should be made by the people of the city in a referendum. This policy was going to be in our manifesto for the May 2020 elections. As the elections were cancelled, we didn't get a chance to launch that manifesto. We agree with the opposition party that consultation needs to happen with people across the city on forms of governance. However, we don't believe that's something that can be rushed through. We are currently in the middle of a pandemic and we feel that now isn't the best time to be launching into a consultation. Our amendment proposes that, that the council will commit to hold a referendum on the future of the city's governance in 2023 alongside the local elections. I believe this will give us enough time to conduct a proper and meaningful consultation with people around the different forms of governance models. We propose holding the referendum alongside the 2023 local elections to reduce the costs associated with running a referendum. A referendum is the best way forward, letting everyone in the city have the opportunity to choose the best form of governance for Liverpool. Hope that people will support this amendment. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Barrington. I've also been advised that Councillor Liz Parsons, Councillor Kushner, Councillor Lincoln, Councillor Crone and Councillor Radford wish to speak to this motion also. Can I please bring in Councillor Liz Parsons? Thank you, my Lord Mayor. I'm somewhat astounded this evening by the levels of hypocrisy from Councillor Kemp, to be honest. Um, I normally try to remain the consummate professional, but I'm actually struggling because I'm quite disgusted by some of the things he said. You know, calling the Labour Party out for its relationship with the Tories from the people who entered the coalition and have wreaked thousands, millions of pounds of cuts on this city is hypocrisy. But actually stating that you want to hold a referendum so that the people in this city have a say at the point where we're in a national lockdown where we've held minute silence for the hundreds of people in this city who've lost their lives. We've heard endless motions and speakers passionately talk this evening about people who are struggling with food poverty, the increase in people accessing universal credit. We've got thousands of people digitally excluded. We've also had thanks to our council staff for the work that they've done during this pandemic and the way that they have shifted their priorities to support our communities, absolutely the right thing to do. There comes a capacity issue. I'm actually really proud of this administration and this council because we have committed to changing the way that we build our relationship with people in this city. We've committed to engaging differently. We started fantastic work on city conversation, but it was right that that was paused to allow people to shift their focus to support our most vulnerable through a pandemic. To suggest that we can carry out a meaningful consultation at this point of time in a lockdown, in a pandemic where people are desperately struggling and grieving is an insult to the people of this city. We are committed to having a referendum. The amendment sets out a clear timeline to do that at a point where it is safe to do it, at a point where it is meaningful, and a point where we can actually engage the people of this city with the decision-making process. And I just am quite shocked that this is brought now. We are revisiting it. It is Groundhog Day. We have already committed as an administration to doing it. And this is nothing more than attempt by Councillor Kemp and the Lib Dems to write election leaflets and it's disrespectful to the people who live in this city. So please, I urge you to support the amendment. Thank you, Councillor Parsons. Can I bring in Councillor Barry Kushner, please? Uh, thank you, my Lord Mayor. I just want to nail just one thing that Councillor Kemp said, um, which is that no one from this administration promised that there was going to be a surplus budget or that there wouldn't be any cuts to the budget. What we promised was that we would try and bring in as much resource as we possibly could into the city to mitigate the cuts that are being made to the council by Richard Kemp's party. It's his party that cut the £450 million to this council and we have done our best to try and mitigate that. 
that aside, I've, I've I've spent a bit of time sort of having a look at Councillor Kemp's blogs. So I've had a look at about 34 of them that he's done since October. Um, and there's lots of them about him wanting to be the mayor. There's lots of articles about the mayorality. There's one on track and trace. If you read his blogs, you wouldn't think that we were in the middle of a pandemic and some of the struggles that uh, our people are, are going through. So, OK, you've called an extraordinary general meeting and it's within your rights within our democracy in the city to do that. And you can choose to pick any theme that you want to for us to debate as part of that extraordinary general meeting. In fact, you did that in 2019, in August 2019, and you've picked today exactly the same theme that you picked in August 2019. I think what's on top of people's minds in the city at the moment, there were jobs, or vaccines, infections, deaths, food, bills, but no, you want to have an extraordinary general meeting to repeat the previous one based on the governance of the city. And this is not a debate about, at the moment, about whether the mayoral model uh, is the right one or not. This is a debate about the democracy that you wanted to, to bring forward uh, today. And for me, I would still argue, and I'll argue for the support of the mayoral model. I think that is, that I think that that is good for the city. And you know, the motion uh, goes into all the things, and the amendment rather goes into all the things that we've done as an administration, you know, to the benefit of the city. But this isn't about me, or about you, and about this is about democracy. You know, and Joe Biden today said, and it's poignant because of what's going on over there, you know, that democracy is fragile and democracy is precious and we will not mess around with democracy and whatever the arguments are or not about the um whether it should have been a referendum in 2012 the fact is that after nine years now and it'll be 10 11 years of having a mayoral model that it's only right that we go back to the people of this city and and say to and in a referendum ask them what model do they do they want we said exactly that in 2019 we're saying it again now as we have to because you brought it forward to us again and let's be clear you know, we have a difference of opinion about that about the mayoral model what are the models of governance within our own group we and within our own party within the city and some of it we've had quite passionate debates about it and we had debates last year about it but we were united about one thing i'm absolutely clear about and that is about the need to have a referendum to put to the people about what they feel is the best form of governance for them and for the benefit of the city and we will lead that and we will lead that and we will facilitate the the, cons minutes. the consultation to open as many people as we can in the city it will be put to the vote and we will stand by the decision whatever it is because that's what is in the interest of the city i support the amendment and i urge it to be supported thank you thank you councillor kushner can i now bring in councillor attorney conception I wish to speak in favour of the amendment. Uh, but first of all, I mean, Councillor Kemp always lectures many of us in this chamber in relation to, you know, the austerity measures and they were needed anyway. What he never explains is that when the Liberal Democrats rushed into coalition with the Conservatives and Danny Alexander was the, uh, the right-hand man of uh, George Osborne, uh, what benefit did we get as a city? We never even got the average uh, cut that other cities got. If we'd have got the average cut, we'd have been £80 million pound better off by now. So we don't need any lectures from Councillor Kemp. And the last time Councillor Kemp parted on the city, I can well remember the headlines in the local press where we were the one lone state, we were the bottom. The Audit Commission said that we were the bottom of the, one of the, uh, in the country in relation to spending tax, uh, council taxpayers' money. So really, we don't need any lectures from Councillor like Kemp. And we all know about the boot estate and what happened to that and how it's being transformed at the moment. But in relation to the motion, obviously, to me, it smacks of political opportunism. And I just wonder, by moving this motion today and asking it to be a comprehensive a consultation with the people of the city and putting a time scale on of three months. I mean, it's just impossible. 
We are in a national lockdown with the highest death rate in the world over the last seven days. We're fast approaching 100,000 people who've lost their lives. Thankfully, we have the vaccine. That's the light at the end of the tunnel. But we're not there yet. And the message is quite clear. Stay at home, protect the NHS and save lives. As Liz Parsons has said in relation to our officers, they will stay and work, working with our colleagues in the NHS, in public health, the emergency services, the volunteers, trying to get our citizens through this nightmare. This is not the time to try and rush through a comprehensive consultation in relation to governance of this city. If Councillor Kemp and the Liberal Democrats are serious about putting the question to the people of this city, in the amendments it's quite clear the timetable is there when it's safe to do so and we will consult in a meaningful way so that everybody has the opportunity to have their say. And there's a guarantee to put that to a referendum in 2023. It's the most sensible way forward instead of the irresponsible motion that we've got before us today, which basically it's for the Liberal Democrats' leaflet campaign that we all know descends into the gutter, even though that we all know that they try to portray themselves as above all that. So therefore, Lord Mayor, I would like to move that we support the amendment as uh, moved by uh, Councillor Barrington. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Conception. Can I bring in Councillor Andrew Nathanson, please? Thank you, my Lord Mayor. Nine years ago, this council voted to impose a mayoral system on Liverpool. Without referendum, without consultation, <clears throat> result a poorly negotiated deal between a Labour Council leader and a long-gone Tory Prime Minister. A Tory Labour deal that ensures power isn't shared by the many, but concentrated with the few, or more accurately, the one. We were told it'd bring money to the city, yet the city deal brought less money than Manchester received, despite them rejecting the mayoral model. It was supposed to bring transparency, yet it resulted in the secret, de secret deals that continually hide behind commercial confidentiality and auditors who refused to sign off the city's accounts for five years in a row. It was supposed to create accountability, yet most voters struggle to identify which of our three mayors and police commissioners are which issue they're responsible for. Instead, they see highly paid politicians on a gravy train. And then, and the proliferation of MERS confuses people who actually lives here. What message does it actually send to potential job creators looking for a place to invest? We have a system where our, our city is held hostage by the character and the rise and fall of an individual who is almost impossible to remove. My Lord Mayor, I'm not going to delve into any of the recent events with the current mayor, but we should remember that it's purely a result of the pandemic that his term of office will end this May. It should have ended in May 2020. My party were confident of our chances in that election, but it's equally possible the current mayor would have been re-elected. We could have, uh, be spending the next three years with a lame duck mayor, refusing to resign but unable to run this city, making our city a laughing stock. That should be a wake-up call to those of you who previously voted against this motion a year and a half ago. If you vote again to pass the book on, uh, to a future council meeting, your constituents will not forgive you for condemning our city to another three years of a system that is unnecessary, obsolete, expensive, unaccountable and undemocratically imposed on the electorate. My Lord Mayor, I'll just finish on this point, that pointing out that the Labour amendment is factually incorrect in claiming that uh, no libraries have closed. Uh, it would certainly be news to uh, former users of both Walton and Edgehill Library. Thank you, my Lord Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Nathanson. Can I now bring in Councillor Crown, please? Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I'll be supporting the motion. The Green Party have always opposed the mayoral model. 
In fact, I've got the voting record from February 2012 here when the council voted to bring in the mayoral model and the Liberal Democrats actually abstained apart from one and all the Greens voted against. So we've always had a very, very firm belief that the mayoral model is wrong for Liverpool uh, in a very, for a very basic democratic reason, it, the simple case that it, it concentrates power in the hands of one person far too much. It reduces the role of councillors, it reduces their role in developing policy and making sure the council is properly scrutinised and as a result it reduces transparency and I think we're all um, living to living with the effects of that to, to some extent. So I agree that we need to consult, we need to ask the people of Liverpool what they want, whether they still want to stick with this model. I think delaying for three years is just kicking into the long grass. I, mm -hmm. I think the um, Amendment is the wrong thing to do. I would de I'll definitely be voting against that, and I think we should be really examining what the best system for Liverpool is, what is going to give us the best, most reliable, best quality governance. Thank you. And can I bring in Councillor Radford, please? Um, can I make it absolutely clear the Liberal Party group uh, voted to try the morality model out? I actually put on public record. I do not think Liverpool would have coped with the economic downturn in finances had we lived under the traditional committee system. I use a comparison when the Liberal Democrats are on the council, they're incapable of streamlining the education service, let alone the city, uh, as auditors showed, and I think that's part of the system. But I'm not scared of having a refresh view on whether it's a, a, an appropriate look. I do not necessarily think we would be more vulnerable or less vulnerable to corruption or uh, scandals if we had a clear Labour majority or a Labour mayor. I'm not sure whether it's more vulnerable or not. However, we shouldn't be scared of the debate. I think what we should be scared of is how many times do we have the press lines of directors, chief executives and others under investigation um, for things that, that clearly have not been tackled within the council. So I think a review is timely. If it's not timely before the local elections, then we shouldn't be having the local elections at all. I personally think we shouldn't have the local elections in May while po uh, polling workers will not be vaccinated and people expect the poll to carry out their civic duty, maybe put themselves at risk. And I'd ask all members of the council to appeal for the local elections to be postponed. But if the local elections are not postponed, then it's seemingly no reason why should we postpone the decision, do we want to change the system or not? The jury, in my mind, is not out. I think the morality has brought some positives as well as some negatives. I think the mayor brought the role into disrepute when he misled the council over the Carlton, but he could have done that as leader of the Labour group as well as being the mayor. And I think some serious bad decisions have been made. I mean, I had to laugh at Gary Miller talking to us about benefits of regeneration in all the wards. Well, the only benefits we've seen in Jewbrook is a con cycle congestion scheme blocking our shopping district. We haven't seen any benefits of regeneration um, that are claimed. Uh, we're still waiting for a rail route to be reopened to the North City to take congestion off going to the football ground. Those are the sort of investments we want. And um, these are things that haven't been delivered under the cabinet system or the mayoral system. So the jury's out in my view what's the right thing to do, but I think it is the right to view to tar it's timely to go back to the residents of the city and ask their opinion. I think this is if it's not the time to do it before a mayoral election, when is it the time? So I will support the amendment, uh, the motion, which is seeking for a consultation before the mayoral elections, because that's when the decision should be made. Um, apart from that, um, I'll close my remarks there. Councillor Radford, can I bring in our final speaker, which is Councillor Richard Kemp, who will also respond in relation to the amendment as his right of reply. Councillor Kemp. Thank you, my Lord Mayor. Oh, that I live to hear this day, to hear Councillor Kushner, recovered no doubt from his two-month holiday given to him by the Labour Whip, lecturing the rest of the council on how we should respond to the coronavirus. 
But what a model the Labour Party have got themselves into. Councillor Barrington says we got the money through the deal. And yet the other Labour councillors present said, look how badly we got from the government. The fact is, with a mayor, they're right. The Labour Party got less than Manchester per capita. Who hasn't got a mayor? They got less than Newcastle. Who hasn't got a mayor? They got less than Birmingham that hasn't got a mayor. So what has a mayoral system brought us? Absolutely nothing, except perhaps a large number of people being arrested, which does put us indeed at the top of the league table. Now, why won't I accept this amendment today? Because we've been here before. Two years ago, I moved the identical motion. And the mayor then, we couldn't debate it, because Mayor Anderson said, we'll refer this for consultation. Sure. And nothing happened. Yes, it would have been better to do it two years ago than today. But we are where we are, and we have this national problem because we have a mayoral system. And I just close by reminding you what will happen if you accept the amendment. In 2015, Torbay Council had a referendum to get rid of the position of elected mayor. Do you know when the electoral mayor system finished in Torbay? 2018, because once you elect a mayor or a police commissioner, if we abolish that, they serve for the rest of their term. So, yes, this isn't the best time. It would be better if all the parties supported, uh, if the Labour Party supported what the Liberals, Greens and Liberal Democrats are saying about a two-month extension to the local elections. But we don't have the luxury of making these decisions. Either vote for the motion unamended or be aware that you are getting a Labour mayor for three years with all the bad things that that entails for our city. I ask Council to reject this amendment. Thank you, Councillor Kemp. So we're going to move to vote on the amendment. So we're voting on the amendment by Councillor Dan Barrington. Are there any members against on the amendment? Against. 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 For purposes of clarity, can the group leaders just confirm so for each of the respective leaders, the Liberal Democrats, Liberals and Greens, your group's respective votes are cast against. Is that correct? Indeed. Correct. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Councillor Bennett, as a whip to the Labour group, can you indicate your group's position collectively, please? Um, we're voting for the amendment by Councillor Dan Barrington. Thank you. Carried by a large majority, therefore. Carried by a large majority. Thank you. So, so we're voting on the substantive motion now. Uh, are there any members against? If the group leaders could again indicate their respective votes, I would ask the Lib Dems, Liberals and Greens to indicate accordingly to their leaders. My Lord Mayor, weak and delayed though this consultation is, it's better than nothing. So we will support the amended motion. Support. Support. It's carried unanimously. As therefore carried unanimously. Thank you, that's carried unanimously. This now brings us to the conclusion of the meeting. We may not agree on lots of things, but I think it's safe to say we agree that this is won quite quite smoothly, considering that we've got to do it over Teams. Okay, so I'm going to call an end to the meeting, so can you please leave the Teams meeting now? Thank you. Thank you, colleagues, and for the benefit of those viewing the live stream, thank you for your patience while viewing this evening's proceedings. And again, following the mantra, please stay safe and follow the continuing.